Welcome back to Hammock Radio. I'm Jason, Kilo Tango Sierra Golf. And today we're going to do a walkthrough of my home station and how I have it set up for doing digital modes. I'll also walk through the steps on how to get this set up in your own shack so you can have a one-click digital mode setup. Let's get started. Okay, first for a little walkthrough. Here I have my ICOM IC7300 with an LDG AT200 Pro tuner. This is powered by MFJ4230 power supply. I also keep my BioNO 15 amp hour battery on hand for backup. From here, this connects to an Alpha Delta 4-way antenna switch. One antenna is my attic mounted, shortened 4020 dipole. And the other goes to an external coax where I can run various outside antennas. Right now I have a 73 foot My Antennas 9 to 1 infed strung over a tree in my backyard. I usually use this exclusively in the winters. For the PC side of things, I just nabbed a Lenovo M900 Tiny off of eBay. And I have my RSP1A plugged into it along with the IC7300. The RSP1A is connected to an MLA30 active receive loop antenna that's also mounted in the attic. And this is powered by the BIOS-T directly from the RSP1A. Okay, so here's the desktop. Now I have it set up so I can just go ahead and start Win4ICOM with one button click, and it will start up all the ancillary applications I use for digital modes. And in this case, I'm already set up to do FT8. So as you can see here, Win4ICOM takes a minute to start up. Once it starts up, it starts up all the other applications automatically, starting with N4FJP, Grid Tracker, and then WSJTX. Okay, let's go ahead and show you how to get it set up. To get started, we first need to configure multiple virtual COM interfaces in Windows so we can handle CIV data between the radio and multiple applications. This is because only one application can use a COM port at a time. In my case, Win4ICOM is using COM3 to talk directly to the radio. This is the COM interface created by the radio's USB interface when you plug it in the computer. What's nice about Win4ICOM is that you can relay that CIV data out to multiple COM ports at once. To take advantage of this, we'll use a free null modem application called COM0COM to configure virtual COM ports in pairs. Each pair will have one port for sending data and one for receiving data. In this screen, you can see my COM interfaces that are set up on my computer and the setup screen for them in COM0COM. It defaults to just one pair of ports, so just click Add Pair to create another set of ports or multiple pairs of ports if you need. Then change the names to any of the available COM port numbers. To do this, just click on the name inside the box and change it to an available COM port number, such as 6789, whatever is not being used currently by your computer. In my case, I added COM6 and 7 and COM8 and 9. We will then configure these ports in Win4ICOM's settings under the third party software and hardware screen. This is probably the hardest part so far. Everything's pretty easy after this. Okay, on to Win4ICOM. Here's the main setup screen for Win4ICOM showing the CIV interface settings. It's already set up to use my IC7300 and the COM3 interface that's being presented over USB from the 7300. On the next tab are the COM interfaces and software. I have three COM ports set up, one for M3 FJP, one for WSJTX and the other for CW Skimmer, which I'm not going to go over today. Here's where we will configure those new COM port pairs we created. The first port in each pair is assigned here for use with an application. This is where Win4ICOM will be sending the CIV data to. The applications will be using the other port in the pair. That will be the port receiving the CIV data for use within that application. Below that are the applications I have set to auto launch on startup, WSJTX, N3FJP, and Grid Tracker. It's also set to automatically close these applications when I close Win4ICOM. The first application is my logger, N3FJP. Here we will configure the rig interface to use COM7, the other end of COM6 that we set in Win4ICOM. This way it gets the proper frequency data from the radio when it saves QSOs. Set everything else up like you normally would for your radio, but take note of the address. Mine had to be changed to 94 for the 7300. Setting up a logger like this normally isn't required since it would already get information passed to it from WSJTX, but I like having it tied in anyway just in case I'm doing something other than digital work. For example, when I'm in the field doing parks in the air, it will automatically grab the time and frequency from the radio so I can focus on recording call signs. Less for me to worry about during a pileup. 
While we're in here, we need to make sure the API server is also enabled because I'm actually going to use Grid Tracker to notify it via the API to log successful QSOs. This way, I don't have to manually import them from the WSJTX log file. Next, in WSJTX, it's the usual setup with the exception being that it's now using one of the COM pairs. Since Win4 ICOM is outputting to COM4, I need to use the other end of it, which is COM5 in WSJTX. Then I just need to set the audio interface to that of the ICOM. Also, under reporting, we wanted to make sure that it's set to output a UDP stream for Grid Tracker to use. Before Grid Tracker, this is what would have been used by WSJT Alert. Finally, within Grid Tracker, we'll need to make sure it's set up to use the correct UDP port that WSJTX is serving data on so that we can properly post all the spots that we're hearing. We also need to make sure it's set to log to N3FJP via the API port we enabled. And with that, we're good to go. With one button click, everything fires up automatically ready for digital modes. It sounds like a lot, but it's really not. Basically, Win4 ICOM is the only app talking to the radio and relaying its CIV data to the other applications. Meanwhile, WSJTX is listening to the audio from the radio and combining that with the data it's getting from Win4 ICOM. You can leave it at that if you wanted to, but I like the visualized data I get from Grid Tracker. I hope this helps others with setting up a digital mode station. The same can be applied to other applications as long as they use a COM interface for CIV data. I haven't used ICOM's own RSBA1 application, so I don't know if it will also handle multiple COM interfaces. But for 60 bucks, Win4 ICOM does everything I need it to do. So, share how you're using your digital modes in the comments below. Until then, 73.